Right, so that leaves two places, right? Yep, the old man or Brian. And what did she mean? That's odd. She seemed like... She was expecting to get it perfectly right. Like something must be wrong. Simply because she couldn't. There's something very strange about her. Between that and the fact that she doesn't want to... That she doesn't want me to see her pick locks. Makes me very, very suspicious. Okay, screwdriver. That could be used to open up the paint. So I think I have everything I need to get to Brian. I'm just thinking about Mitzi. I'm just thinking about whether maybe she's the queen of maggots. Or something like that. She doesn't have the super long arms, though. But... I don't know. I can easily pry it open with a screwdriver. Done. I can pick up the tin now. This is it. We've got all we need. Great! Are you going to tell me about the Cat Widow now? Yes. It's story time, Mitzi. The legend says there was once a bad man who hated cats. He hated his neighbors too, and his job. And when it rained, he'd curse and smash things. He hated his bald head and his weak, ugly body. He probably hated himself the most, although he would never admit it. I think I see where this is going. One day, out of pure hatred for the whole world and everything that lives, he captured a family of cats and drowned them all in the river. That day, the sun turned black and all the birds went silent as the six kittens struggled for life. But trapped in a strong canvas bag, they never had a chance. They all died that day, all but one. The mother cat, in a desperate fight to set herself free, by pure luck, clawed her way out of the bag and swam to the shore. She lost everything that day. Her beautiful children and her proud husband. Her heart crashed into pieces as she watched their limp dead bodies stolen by the current. Running after them, she followed them for days, for as long as she could. Then... Eventually, she lost sight of them. She stayed on the bank of the river for a while. The world stopped turning for her, her eyes empty and blind. And then, one day, she slowly slid down the bank and into the cold, dark water. She gave in to it. She let the river take her away too, cover her mouth, her ears, her eyes. But as the water filled her lungs and she started slipping into darkness, there was another strange feeling that burst in her mind like a ball of flames. Anger, rage even, her last craving before she drowned was for revenge, for blood. And so she returned, reborn and changed, a cat widow, veiled in black, mistress of the cats. Her body of a young woman, but her eyes of a cat, and her face, white, rotten, face of a corpse. Those who saw it rarely lived to tell the tale. 
She would get her revenge on all cat killers and cat torturers. But there was someone she had to see first. Someone special. Someone she really hated the most. <laughs> as the evening came, it was strangely quiet in the man's flat. As he lived alone, he usually liked to fill the silence with the sound of radio or TV shows. But that night, he switched them all off, feeling anxious and tired after work. He tried to sleep, but couldn't. And for once, there wasn't anyone there he could blame for it. As he stared through the window, he kept thinking about how much he hated that view. He liked it once, a long time ago, when his wife was still there and they were happy together. Suddenly, he heard knocking on the door. Some part of him was glad, because that meant he could take it out on whoever decided to bother him. There was nobody there. He almost felt disappointed. But before he turned to walk away, he suddenly noticed something down the hall. Ah, I get to actually create the tale myself. Hmm. He noticed a shadow. He noticed a shadow of a cloaked figure standing ahead. He stopped again. He couldn't believe his eyes. Someone wrote Cat Killer on his door. He had a passion for trains. Although he hated being a train driver, he had always enjoyed watching them move. But now, his train model was moving all on its own. He was absolutely certain he'd left it switched off. And yet, there it was, running at crazy speed, remote control missing. Something was seriously wrong. And that something had entered his home now, too. He hoped he was just imagining things, tired as he was. But there was another surprise waiting for him in his bedroom. A giant blood-soaked zombie cat's out on his bed. What the hell? Or cat would it was here was written all over the... Hmm. Let's go with the first one. A giant, blood-soaked zombie cat sat on his bed. <laughs> now that's really stupid. <laughs> Fair yes. enough. Yes, it is. That didn't really happen. Everyone knows there's no such thing as giant zombie cats, right? What really happened was this. That's great. You can actually make really stupid stuff happen, and they actually kind of played out for a little bit. I like that. All right. Yeah, this is what actually happened. Cat Widow is here was written all over the wall.
Hmm. As in a dream. Well, no, he's not in a dream. He's gonna do real world stuff, so. He was getting scared. Getting really scared now. He decided to call the police. His phone was of no use. The SIM card had been removed, and that wasn't even the worst part. There was a photo of a black cat set as screensaver. He remembered this cat. He'd watched that strange pest control man put it in a cage and into his van. He'd looked at it through the window for a while, then pulled the curtains and went to bed. As in a dream, he went to the kitchen to get a drink. There was no water. He knew there were valves in the basement that turned it off but no one's been down there for years. He felt sick. None of this made any sense. And yet, deep down, he knew what he did to the cats was wrong. There was a part of him that almost wanted to be punished, the part he tried so hard to hide. He thought he'd heard something in the corridor. Was there someone there with him? His head was spinning. He felt ambushed, trapped, like an animal. He had to get out of there. He stopped, paralyzed. He'd heard something right in front of him. A whisper, more like a purr. She was there in the dark corner of his living room, waiting. Black veil covering that pale, dead face. And yet, he could almost feel Cat Widow's eyes piercing through him. <laughs> the first one, Cat Widow aimed a shotgun at his chest. No. She came closer, like a ghost, and swiftly removed the veil. She came back for him, to take him to the river, to make him pay for what he'd done. As he looked into her eyes, he could feel the world spinning around him, his knees go weak, his pants suddenly wet around his crotch. As much as he hated life, he didn't want to die either. Inside, he was just a big, stinking coward. And then... He fainted. Ha ha ha! Did you see his face? I knew he'd fall for this. Yeah, we scared the living shit out of him. Now that's teamwork. Are you sure he won't know it was you, though? Oh, he probably will. Once he's had time to think about what happened. But he's too proud to ever admit he's been beaten by a woman. I know him just about enough to know that. Let's hope so. I don't want you to get in trouble because of me. No. That was something I had to do for myself. And I feel much better for it. The only problem now is that we still haven't found Eye of Adam. Because it definitely isn't Brian. I've searched through his laptop, and all I found was a load of porn. Let's cross him off the list. Well, it's gotta be the old man in flat five then, right? Huh. 
Alright, that, yeah, that section of gameplay was really freaking cool. I, I'm really impressed with that. That was so... It totally subverted any sort of expectation of what would happen that I had. I didn't think it'd be so involved. You know, I thought you just do it and then, I don't know, there's a little cutscene or something and then it's the end of it. But no, it's this whole story. But one that you get to watch the entirety of and actually influence. And tell and make it. And you can even kind of mess around with it and do stupid stuff and the story actually adapts to it but then kind of, you know, springs back. Like you can bend, you can bend it a little bit. And it responds to that but then it snaps back like a rubber band. That was really cool. I like that a lot. That's one of my most favorite sections of the entire game so far, I think. Just because of how unique it was. Alright, well, let's go check out the old man's apartment, I guess. In just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, let's go speak to the old man. is on floor three. Yeah. Let's listen in. I think I heard someone cough. He's home all right. Let's have a chat with him. Would you like to talk to him? Sure. I'll pretend I'm doing one of those customer surveys. Old people usually have time to answer lots of stupid questions. They just want some attention, Mitzi. There, sir. If you could spare us just a few minutes of your time, we'd like to ask some questions about your internet service provider. I'm not interested. I don't have any money. Go bother someone else. Oh. But we're not trying to sell anything. It's just a little survey. What? Wait a second. I, I can't hear what you're saying, sweetie. Let me get my hair again. You think he'll be back with a shotgun? Don't be silly. This isn't America. Uh, I thought I heard someone. What did you want? Do you own a computer connected to the internet? Do you own a computer connected to the internet? Say again? Right. Okay. Do you... I can't hear you very well, dear. You'll have to speak up. I'm an old man, you know. I'll be 85 this year. <laughs> I'm actually gonna have to shout at him, aren't I? Okay. Do you have a computer? There's no need to shout. I've got my hearing aids. I can hear what you're saying. Sorry. A young, pretty lady like yourself? I wouldn't understand about old age. We live in two different worlds, dear. And if you're here to make fun of me, why won't you just go ahead and be done with it? No, no, with all respect, I... I just wanted to ask if you by any chance own a computer. Pardon? A computer! Wait a second, dear. I think I need to change the batteries in my hearing aid. I must have forgotten to switch them off last night. I'll be right back. No, wait! Jesus. I don't think I've got enough patience for this, Mrs. A. To be honest, the chances that he's our guy are pretty slim. I think we should go. Yeah, this is pointless. Even if he did have a computer, he probably wouldn't even remember how to switch it on. Unless he's not alone. You should ask him about that before we go. Hmm. Can I help you? No, thanks. We're fine. Have you found some batteries? What? 
I don't want to buy anything. I told you before, I'm not interested. I don't have any money. Go bother someone else. Ah. <sighs> this guy is insufferable. Do you live alone? You live alone? When you're an old man like me, you end up watching all your friends and family die. I'll be 85 this year, but I can still cook my dinner, and I make my bed every morning, all by myself. So, you do live alone then? Look, young lady, I don't need any help. I've told them already, I can manage just fine. I can still cook my dinner, and I make my bed every morning, all by myself. And not that it's any of your business, but when I die, I'll die in my own home, in my own bed. I'm honestly not trying to take that away from you. We're just here to ask about... I will not have anyone washing me, or, or dressing me, or feeding me. I can manage. I've done it all my life, and it'll stay this way. I can still cook my bed, and, and I make my dinner every morning, all by myself. Right, okay. Yeah, he's obviously suffering from, what would it be, dementia or Alzheimer's? I'm not sure. But, uh, his mind is definitely going. Alright, sorry to have bothered you, sir. Sorry to have bothered you, sir. We'll go now. I'll see you later, ladies. Next time I'll do the talking, yeah? He's tough. Wouldn't answer a single question. But he can't possibly be an internet whiz. Yep, he's just a lonely old man. Let's cross him off the list. Okay, that kind of brings us to a problem. Well, that means we've checked everyone. We've hit a brick wall. Perhaps I was wrong. Wait, hit a brick wall? The all. basement? I think we need to sleep on it, and we might get some more ideas in the morning. Shall we head back home? Yeah, I do feel tired. You're right. We need some sleep. Thanks, Susan. It meant a lot that you came with me today. What's that? A note? What does it say, Mrs. A? You will not believe it. Meet me at midnight, both of you. I will wait. Flat five. Door will be open. Do not fear. Eye of Adam. Flat five. That's the old guy. It can't be. It can't be him. I guess we'll find out. At midnight. We've got a few hours until then. Let's get some coffee. I was just wondering if that brick wall thing was a subtle hint at the literal brick wall here in the basement. That one, right there. The one that was freshly put in. Strange that they would show it. Hmm. Okay, what's up with the battle music? Oh, what the fuck? Just you and me, my love. No one will find us here. Stop worrying, Ivy. 
It will be all right. I will always love you. You know that. I'm going to make you all better. Ivy's not doing too well. She looks different than when I last saw her. Chapter 7 Don't Feed the Troll Whoa, we're back here. Go ahead and save the game here. This is actually a really nice looking place. I don't like the look of that water. There isn't a single fish in the tank. Hmm. It does look strange. It almost looks like embalming fluid. Crazy son of a bitch. That's not gonna stop us. I think there's someone in the kitchen. Keep out. Do not play on or around. Private property. Are you... Are you Adam? Me? No, of course not. I don't have anything to do with all this foolishness. Never have. It's my son. I've told him time and time again, but he never listens. I've done my best to protect that boy, you know. I'm all he's got left in the world since his mama died, but it just wasn't enough. Where is he then? Where's Eye of Adam? He's in his room. Where else would he be? He's always in his room, staring at that screen for as long as he can. Look, I've made up my mind about this. I want to help you. This mess he's in, it's gone too far. I don't, I, I, I can't be part of this. What are you talking about? You don't understand. He's watching us. Right now, he can see us on his camera. He's very clever with this stuff. I never got my head around it. Just as much as I needed to, I guess. But not a lot. Give us the key to his room. I want to talk to him. Look, it's a trap. He knows why you're here. And he will kill you. Both of you. But he will not kill me. He won't dare. All these years. I've looked after him well. He owes me everything. It breaks my heart to do this now. But what choice do I have? He left me this. 
I was supposed to keep it for myself, but I want you to take it. He won't dare to kill his own father, and I won't let two innocent lives be lost because of him. What is it? Just take the damn thing. There's not much time. Didn't you hear me? He's watching. What? Uh, okay, what is it? Do I want to take it? Okay, I'll take your box. What is it, Mrs. A? It's a shoe box. Take it away! Get rid of it! He must see that I don't have it anymore! Shall we open it? Do I have to? I kind of want to just leave. I can't. Okay. It's a cardboard shoebox. Oh god. Mitzi, we have to get out of here. Quickly. It's a gas mask. He's going to poison us. Okay, but he wouldn't poison the whole room because his father doesn't have the gas mask. That's why I said he needs to know that I don't have it anymore. He wouldn't kill his own father, would he? I guess he would. It's too late! Shit. Oh, shit. 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 No! Stop that, Adam! You're going to kill your father! We'll never make it to the door. That room is filling up with gas too quickly. Put the mask on, Mrs. A. What about you? No, no, I can't. You've got to. This is your only chance. I... no. I can't let you die. Not like this. It's my fault that you're here. I'm dying anyway. And you... You've got to live, Mrs. A. You'll live and you'll be happy again. You are... You've been a great friend, Mrs. A. I'm not going to put it on. I I can't die. I'm just going to come back. She can die. I'm going to give it to her. No. You've got a date, and I'll make sure you turn up for it. I can't. There is no time to argue. I'll be fine. Now. Do it! Now we truly are back here. Well, it looks like the same sort of place as the very beginning of the game, but it might actually but it actually looks a little bit different. I wonder if I'll find the house again. Yeah, this is definitely different. Oh, there it is. Welcome home, darling. I've been waiting for you. What took you so long? Say what you've got to say and let's finish this. I'm tired of you. Tired of all this madness. 
I just need to get back. Very well. I'm not planning to keep you long. Let's go inside. I have one last job for you. There are still two candles left, Susan. You know how this works. A soul for a soul. And that's it. I blow out the last candle and I'll never have to see you again. Only if you blow out the right one, I'll never bother you again. Isn't that what you want? But if you choose wrong, it will be your life extinguished forever. Just take a deep breath and do it. But how should I know which one's right? That's the thing, Susan. You can't know that. In life, you can't always know the consequences before you make a decision. Haven't you learned that yet? That's not fair. Nothing is fair. You opened your heart talking to that doctor and he butchered you like an animal. Then those disgusting cannibals, they chop you up and cook you for dinner if you'd let them. And what about the man with the flowers? All that he wanted was to hear you play before he split your skull open. The way your husband treated you. The way your neighbors laughed at you for years, just for being different. You did not deserve all that, and yet it happened. Am I forgetting something? Ah, oh, yes, of course. Most of all, was it fair that... Shut up! Just shut up, you ugly bitch! Now I know who you really are. All those feelings I had in me for years. That bitter guilt and self-pity. That hatred for myself and everyone else. You are that miserable illness that's consumed my heart all these years. You, always there. Every day I looked at you in the mirror, like a dark cloud I couldn't see through. I let you take control of my life. I believed it was right to feel like this. But not any longer. This ends here. Then blow out the candle. Hmm. We've come to a rather big decision. Left candle, right candle, or refuse. I'm not going to do anything she tells me to do. No, I won't. I'm done playing your stupid little games. You won't tell me what to do anymore. I am stronger than you. I can close my eyes, and you'll be gone. Blow out the candle! It's time to say goodbye, sister. I'm not gonna miss you. You will never leave this place without me! You need me! We are one! No! Tomato. You were thinking about a tomato, right? Tomato is a fruit, silly. Who cares? I like tomatoes. So do I. But... I hate to disappoint you, but I was really thinking of onions. Why onions? 
and the saddest of the vegetables, of course. They make people cry. I... What happened, Mrs. A? I saw you die. And yet, you are here. Alive, like if nothing's ever happened. Well, let's put it this way. Everyone knows cats have nine lives. So do cat ladies, apparently. But this time, I feel there won't be second chances. I'm down to one last life now. I can't afford to waste it. You are such a nutter, Mrs. A. You are absolutely fucking bonkers. But I'm so happy to see you. Never, ever do that to me again, all right? I can happily promise you that, Mitzi. This is it. His room is through that door. It's time to face the Eye of Adam. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. It's all been leading up to this. And I have no more lives. of Adam? A pathetic, wheelchair-bound invalid? Is this a joke? Do you... Do you know who I am? Do you know what you've done to me? You fucking murderer! Tonight it's your turn to die. I'm gonna paint this room with your brains and I'm gonna watch and smile. I swear to God I'll do it. Well? Nothing to say? Nothing at all? Aren't you going to beg for your sad little life? Say something! Anything! Mitzi. Where did you get that gun from? It doesn't matter. Please, Mrs. A. This is something I have to do. You are free to leave if you want. You don't have to be a part of it. Just try to understand. Beg for forgiveness, you scum. What the fuck is wrong with you? You don't believe I'm gonna shoot you, do you? Oh, I've dreamt of this moment for so long. Look at this man, Mitzi. He hasn't twitched a muscle since we entered the room. I think he's paralyzed. That's... That's impossible. He's lying to us. He's faking it. Do something. Talk for God's sake. I need you to answer me. I need to know! He won't answer you. He can't talk. Then... How did he post all that stuff online? What the... I think I know how. See that little device on his left eye? I've heard about these. It's a controller. It seems the only part of his body he can move is his eyeball. Controller connected to the computer tracks its movement, allowing him to... What? That's ridiculous! How do you even know such things? 
I'm a nurse? I've seen these before. Well, I've seen eye-controlled wheelchairs, but there's no reason why it wouldn't work with a computer. Jesus. That would explain the whole Eye of Adam thing. He really is just the eye. But... No. That doesn't change anything. He must die. He deserves nothing more. Shit! I will fucking do it! Just tell me one thing. One thing! Why? Why did you make Jack kill himself? It'll be a pleasure. Ready to die, scumbag? She did lie to me. She did. She said she did just wanted to talk, and that's obviously not true at all. Also, I heard a certain story about oxygen tanks and fires and stuff like that, so look at the oxygen tanks. Look at these oxygen tanks. I don't think it's a good idea. What? Why not? I'm the one holding a gun here. And I will blow this bastard's brain out as soon as he looks at me. You hear me? Look at me. I want you to see what you've done. The pain you've caused me. Mitzi, that's not what I meant. Just put the gun down for a second. No! No. I can't do that, Mrs. A. I'm sorry. This is something I have to do. I have to! Can't you hear that hissing sound? These cylinders are clearly leaking gas. Please stay out of it! You'll make a whole room blow up! I. Don't. Care. Just leave me alone! You lied to me. You never said you wanted to kill him. Now, wasn't that quite obvious? What did you think I wanted to do? Have a coffee with him? Chat about the weather or, or politics? For God's sake, I'm here because this son of a bitch needs to die. If I don't kill him now, he'll just carry on and more innocent people will lose their lives. Do you really want that? Because I don't. This isn't the way to do it. This isn't the way to do it. Just turn these computers off instead. No! He doesn't deserve to live after what he's done. And who are you to serve justice like this? Do you really want to kill an unarmed, paralyzed man? Why are you doing this, Mrs. A? I thought you were my friend! That's exactly why I'm doing this? Even if we survive the explosion, how will you be able to live with yourself? I won't have very long to live with it. I'll manage just fine. Without his father, he can't even do anything. Who do you think set all of this up? He certainly didn't. 
He can't set a damn thing up. His father took care of him. Without his father, he's harmless. He was the one who supplied him with all this technology. He fulfilled his every single wish. I know this guy's rotten bad. There's no excuse for what he did. But he will be punished for it. Trust me. They'll put him in some stinking nursing home. He'll live his life like a vegetable. Stuck to bed, he'll have time to think about what he's done. And he'll never see a computer screen again. Isn't that enough? He said, do it. He wants to die and I want to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> he wants us all to die. Can't you see that? Isn't that what he's been preaching? A joint suicide. That's why he wants you to shoot him. So we can all get blown to pieces. His final act. The work of his life. Are you really going to give him that satisfaction? Remember what you said about feeding the troll? That's exactly what you're going to do if you kill him now. No. Maybe you're right. You should leave, Mrs. A. I'd never want you to get hurt. But I'm not going away without this fucker dead. Even if that means I die too. Mitzi, have you lost your mind? You're going to sacrifice your life for this scum? He's... A parasite! A worthless, evil piece of shit! It's not like I've got anyone to live for, is it? What? What about your mother? Your family? She's dead! Yeah, I lied. I always lie. I grew up in an orphanage. My family never wanted to know me. The only person that cared about me was Jack, and he's dead! Yeah, happy now? So get the fuck out of here and let me do what I got to do! I care about you. Do it for me. Come on, mate. It's been a long day. Let's go home. We've won. Have we really? Trust me. I know we have. How? I'm the cat lady. From now on, I win every single day. It's me, again, talking about my ordinary little life, as usual. I'm still surprised anyone would want to read this at all. The ramblings of a cat lady. Maybe I'm not a cat lady anymore. Things have changed here since Mitzi's death. I'll never forget those last few weeks. It's a horrible way to die. Stuck in a hospital bed with no hope and whole life to pass you by. Six months ago, I lost the best friend I'd ever had. But at least we knew it was coming. I had time to accept it, just like she did. And I can only be glad we spent that time together. I still miss her though, every day. Did I ever mention I got into all this because of her? opened her laptop the night after the funeral, and there it was. A friend request, over a year old. A little gift from behind the grave. 
I met some people. We go out sometimes, and I'm not alone anymore. It turned out there were others who felt like I did. I talked to them, tried to help. And now, I'm writing this blog. I must confess, yesterday was bad. It was one of those days when you feel like you're back in the past, and all the good stuff that happened was just a dream. But I woke up today, feeling better. Maybe I can never get rid of it. This invisible illness. Maybe it will always be living somewhere deep inside me. Asleep. Waiting. And when it'll hit me, it'll hit me hard. But if there's one thing Mitzi taught me, it's that you have to pick yourself up and carry on. It doesn't matter that life isn't fair. It doesn't matter that you make mistakes. You fall and rise again. Worlds full of liars, traitors, cowards. But every now and then, you meet someone like Mitzi, who will just smile at it all. Now, I've forgiven the world and myself too. I teach myself to smile again. One day I'll get there. I know I will. Even if it takes me not nine, but nine hundred lives. I think I'll let the credits play out before I say anything. I really want to listen to this song.
Press any key to live. Oh, it closed out the game. Wow, yeah, I felt like I had to listen to the music. I didn't feel ready to talk about the game yet. Oh boy, that was... That was a journey. That was one hell of a journey. I felt like I just... I feel like I just went into some great big machine and it just... Like, battered me around and threw me out the other end. Like I've been processed. I've been mushed up and reformed back into myself and then pushed out the end. If that makes any sense. It probably doesn't. But, wow, just the feeling of that game. I, I'm not sure how to describe it. Alright, so let's dig into it. God, there's so much to say. And there's so much I'm going to forget to say. But I'll try. Alright, so overall, the game to me just... It feels very... Raw. In pretty much... Every possible way. It feels like a very personal game. It feels like the creator kind of just... Well, it feels like a very personal project. That's what I get from it. It, it feels like it's someone's feelings that have just been expressed as honestly impossible as honestly as possible in a game form no matter how extreme or disturbing they are it f yeah I, I guess it feels sort of like someone just took their heart and then put it on the screen if that makes any sense it, it just feels so personal in a way that most games don't because it's not a game about mechanics. Not really. It's about... Well, it's about the story. And the story that it tells just... Again, I don't know how to say it other than it feels very, very personal. And I really, really like that. It's not something I often feel from a game. It just feels like it's something that the developer or developers really wanted to wanted to do. Like I want to I want to say this. Or I want to explore this, and then they just did it. And I love it. I, I'm surprised with how much I loved it. Like I said at the start, I had seen someone play it for a few hours. And there's some things I liked about it and some things I didn't. However, the stuff that I didn't like about it, which was mostly mostly in sort of the puzzle design. I was worried it would go too far and just become one of those adventure games that just annoys the hell out of me and is really frustrating to play. You know, one of those adventure games that has puzzles that get in the way of my enjoyment of the story rather than adding to it. But that didn't really happen. The part that I had sort of the most problem with, which was the the hospital section, that was pretty much as as bad as the annoyance got for me. So I'm really happy to see that never went any further. Oftentimes the puzzles in adventure games tend to get worse and worse towards the end for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because they try to make it more complicated towards the end. They try to make it more challenging. Sort of a, a progression of challenge. Like you see in a lot of games. But it tends to happen and that's kind of what I was expecting. But that didn't happen at all. So I'm super, super surprised and very happy that it didn't do that. And I knew it was dark and disturbing from what I'd seen, but I didn't realize just how much I would like that. I like dark and disturbing things, but in this case... Well, okay, the game seemed to straddle the line in terms of having dark and disturbing stuff that felt like it was... Whoops, I just hit the desk. That felt like it was... Uh, it had a point. That felt like it belonged. And also the dark and disturbing stuff that just feels like it was put in for no reason. So sometimes it kind of straddled the line and I was thinking... It seems kind of silly, like maybe they're going over the top. Maybe there's too much of it. Maybe I'm becoming desensitized to it, but... 
it never went over the line. So it always felt like the dark and disturbing stuff that was there was there for a reason. And not just random, not just, let's make this game dark and disturbing, so let's throw dark and disturbing things in. But no, it felt like there was a point to it. And again, the end result is something that is just so raw. I don't know if there's a better way to describe it than that. It just feels so painful, the game. It seems like it might have been painful to actually make. I don't know if this is, you know, I don't know if it is a really, really personal project for the creator. Maybe the creator, maybe the creator himself suffers from depression. I don't know. But it certainly feels like it regardless. That, you know, it feels like it's very, very personal. And I like that. I really, really like that. You know, I, I play a lot of games that are, well, maybe not a lot, but I play some games that are about systems. They're about mechanics. And and that's fun, of course, but it's also nice to play things that are... You can't really feel a personal... I, I never feel a personal connection to someone because of mechanics. They can be fun. They can be interesting, but... I don't feel connected with the creator through mechanics. For me, that comes through story. So it's nice to I, it's nice to have a balance, you know, a lot of mechanic-oriented games, but also some story-based games, and this is definitely in the story-based games category. Where the hell is I going with that thought? I don't know if I finished it. Whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm so bad at giving wrap-ups. It's such a strange game. It feels like, on top of feeling raw, I mean, it feels raw in many, many ways. It feels like it's... Like, the game is almost too big for its skin. Like, it's some shambling, rotting zombie that's falling apart, and I'm kind of amazed it works. Because it, I mean, it definitely has issues. But I love it despite those issues. It's just that the overall feel of it is so... Strange. I'm kind of bewildered about how it was actually created. In terms of talking about how raw it is, it, it looks raw. It looks very... In, so, in many ways, it looks really crude. In terms of just, like, the, the animation and the art quality. It's, there's such a huge difference between... Or there's such a huge wide range of the quality of the art. I mean, looking at it, you think maybe the characters would probably receive the most focus and they'd look really good, but actually most of the characters looked really, really bad and, and just strange. And the animations were also really bad. And some of the backgrounds also look really bad, but then some of the backgrounds actually look really good. So there's this huge range. Everything ranging from really good-looking backgrounds to stuff that just looked like it was crudely clipped out of an image and just... just looked really bizarre. And that, that lends itself, or that that kind of gives me that raw feeling. It feels like it was kind of like slapped together, sort of. And I don't mean that as an insult. I don't mean that the creator was lazy or anything, but it just looks that way. It feels some sort of like somebody mashed a bunch of things together, and somehow it works. And I'm kind of bewildered as to why. You can even see that in some of the gameplay mechanics that kind of pop up for a very short amount of time. For example, there is a section in the in Susan's apartment. I think it's when you first come home and you have that meter up here. It's like your your distress meter or whatever it's called and then you also have the blue meter that shows up which is your the one you need to fill to get rested, to get rest. So there's this gameplay mechanic introduced about her her mental state and it only shows up for that one scene. It just it comes out of nowhere. And then you have to deal with it for five to ten minutes, and then it never shows up again. And this is in a, what, like an eight to ten hour game, I think? It's so bizarre. Like, there's this mechanic that just popped up and then disappeared. Just came out of nowhere, and then disappeared. Out of nowhere. It kind of, 
it, it, it felt like slapped together in very in a very strange way. That often left me kind of cocking my head to the side and thinking, what? Like, what were you trying to do there? I don't understand. Same thing with the, like, press a key to the side to, to do something. I think, when did you use that? I think it's two times when you did that. Once when you were, you had to hold the left key to shoot the shotgun. At the, the pest control guy's wife who was chopping up cats. You have to hold the left the left button to pull back the trigger. And then the other time, I think, was when you were trying to rip off the pipes when you were stuck in the bathtub with Mitzi, Susan and Mitzi. I think those were the only two times where you had to sort of press a key to the side or move back and forth or whatever sort of mechanic. Again, it just kind of came out of nowhere. It's barely used and just kind of left me scratching my head. Like, why is that even in there? You know, if you're not going to use a mechanic very much, if it's sort of just a one-time thing, it's very strange to have it in. So that, again, contributes to the raw feeling of the game. It feels... It feels like somebody created some sort of Frankensteinian game made from a bunch of strange clip art and... Oh, the music, too! Like, a lot of the music is really, really good. And I loved it. With probably the highlight being the one section where you first play the piano for your cats to summon them. That's her words, not mine. She calls it summoning the cats, which is... Pretty awesome. Makes it sound like makes her sound like some sort of a, I don't know, superhero or something. But yeah, the first time she plays a piano, she starts playing this surprisingly complex piece. And then the camera starts moving to the side, and then you start going outside, and you see the cats coming in, and making their way to her place. And it switches from just her playing the piano to suddenly there's more instruments. You know, now there's a I think it's a drum and some sort of a bass. Maybe a stand-up bass or whatever it was. So all these instruments come in, and now it's it's like taken away from her. It transitioned from simply being her piano playing to suddenly being a full song. And just, like, the way that transition happened was really, really cool. I loved it so much. So, the you know, often the music really works, and it's really, really good. Other times it just felt strange, such as... Also near the beginning, when you're wandering around the fields, I remember there was one point where... The game was damn creepy. And suddenly sort of groovy, jazzy type music started playing, and I just thought, what? I don't think this is a time to be grooving. As much as I like groovy music, this doesn't seem appropriate. So again, everything just varies hugely from music that's really good and used very well to music that is, albeit good, but used in a very strange situation. And again, character art that looks in general, really crude and really bad. And then some backgrounds that also look like they're horribly clipped out and look very strange, but other backgrounds that also look very good. And then gameplay mechanics, which were in general quite good. And then you have these random ones which are... There's nothing necessarily wrong with them. They're just... They suddenly appear and then disappear. It, just, it feels very strange, like everything was thrown into some gigantic soup pot. Just so strange. It's a gigantic shambling beast. It's all crudely stitched together, and somehow it, like as it walks, body parts are and organs are just coming out of the seams, falling onto the falling onto the ground with a wet smack. This is a wonderful mental image, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, just falling onto the ground as this thing shambles about, and somehow it kind of works. But it doesn't stop me from, again, cocking my head to the side and thinking, what? And then, well, when it comes to the gameplay mechanics, things that just kind of popped up once and then... And then disappear and are kind of strange. There's also ones that pop up, well, like, once and then disappear, but they're actually really, really good and interesting. For example, the time when you're first talking, or maybe not the first time, but... One of, one of the times you're talking to Dr. X. And... You're telling him the story of what happened to Liz the night before, when Liz jumped off the roof. And there's this little there's this little sort of bubble that appears above both of your heads. And it's the the memory. It's what you're saying to him, what you know, the story that you're telling to him of what happened to Liz. And it appears above there, and I thought, okay, so they're gonna be there's gonna be this little sort of memory bubble that appears above her head that is going to play out what happened, right? And then I find out after nothing happens for a few seconds, I realize, oh, in the memory, I'm actually in control. 
of the character inside of the memory. So you're not just sitting there listening to Susan say what happened, you're actually playing what happened. And it does it in such a strange and fascinating way. It doesn't just it doesn't just transition fully over to the memory, but it actually starts with you controlling the memory from within the scene of her talking about the memory. And then it transitions to, you know, full screen. You're playing through it. And I thought that was so cool and so strange and surprising. You know, in that case, such a suddenly introduced mechanic actually works because... I guess just because it's so simple. You know, it was, there were a couple seconds of awkwardness when I didn't even realize I was in control of the character, but after that, I got it. Pretty much instantly. And then... Um... I don't know if you can call this a mechanic. I guess maybe you could... Uh, one of my most favorite sections of the entire game... Is... The one towards the end when you're doing the, uh... The... What was it called? The, the Cat Widow? The Cat Widow story with... The guy upstairs, the bald guy. And she starts to explain to Mitzi the story of it. And then you realize, oh, the story she's telling is the one that's about to happen. The one she's going to do with that guy to scare him. And I'm thinking, okay, that's pretty cool. And then you start to actually choose how she's telling the story to Mitzi. And you're actually seeing what happens. Visually seeing what happens with your story. You're, you're creating the story that's going to happen in the future and kind of already happened. Like, it's it's really strange, but it works so well. So you're choosing what's happening in this scary story that she's telling that's kind of happening and kind of is going to happen, kind of already did happen. And it's going with your decisions. Even if you pick something really silly, it actually bends a little bit. And it goes to accommodate it, like with the, the gigantic zombie cat on his bed. <laughs> Which was just humorous. You know, the story actually bended to accept that. And it actually made it happen, but then it kind of like rebounded back and, you know, Mitzi said, that's silly, and then you went back onto the right track. I thought that was really, really cool. Again, another case where I thought, well, what's happening? But then very quickly, I, it just, you know, clicked. And I got it. So there's some really inventive stuff, really inventive stuff in this game. In terms of, I guess you could say gameplay. I guess that's gameplay. Yeah. It's just so strange. Such a strange game. In such a good way, too. In a unique and fascinating and inventive and very raw and personal way. I guess to talk more about the rawness of the game... You could even talk about the voice acting, which in general is, um, I don't, I, I guess in general I'd say it's very good. There's definitely some voice, voice actors that were not very good, but most of them were very good. Uh, but more of what I'm thinking of when it comes to the voice actors is just the audio quality. It's obvious that no one had their voice recorded on a, any sort of a, a microphone, even pro, even approaching professional quality. They all sounded very crude in terms of the recording quality. It sounded like it was recorded on a very, very cheap microphones. Uh, you could hear all sorts of plosives of people speaking into a microphone without a sort of pop filter. So, for example, if I turn too close to the microphone and say plosives, plosives, plosives. Did that work? Pl -pl -pl. There we go. That worked. I can see it registering. Yeah. You can hear people just, you know, blowing air into the microphone and causing these horrible noises to happen like I just did. So you can tell that it wasn't professionally recorded at all. It just sounds very rough. Which again, lends its, or adds to the feeling of rawness to the entire game in, in every way. In the, the use of music, in the gameplay mechanics, in the graphics, in the sound, it just feels like it was kind of somehow amazingly cobbled together. But what an amazing job they've done cobbling it together. Because this is, um, it's, I'm not exactly sure how long it is again. I think it's like eight to ten hours probably was my playtime. Somewhere around there. So it's a long game, especially for an indie game. That's quite long. And the really, really surprising thing about it is just how much stuff it has in it. 
it's long, but it's not formulitic. It's, you know, it doesn't happen on this, the same formula that just keeps repeating, or it also doesn't feel like it's drawn out and just has a bunch of filler. I don't think there's much filler in this game at all. If anything, that, if, if it has anything that could be described as filler, I would say maybe some of the sections had puzzles that, again, were like the hospital section, which just felt pretty silly. And I didn't care for that too much, but they were relatively minor. You know, most of what I, I did in the game didn't feel like filler whatsoever. It was all unique, interesting stuff. So to have such a long game, with so much stuff happening, with very little of anything I could possibly describe as filler, is really astounding. I suspect that might be one of the reasons it looks and sounds so crude in some in many ways is just because to, you know, to have really high production values with such a small... I, I, did, did they have a team? I don't know if it was made by a team or mostly made by one person. I'm not sure. But obviously it was not made by many people. So to be made by such a small group of people, or maybe even one person, and have it be so long, and with no real, no real filler, to have high production values with that would be <laughs> almost impossible unless you work for like 10 years on the game or something. Good luck with that. So I can totally understand why it looks like that. You know, why it looks the way it does and why it sounds the way it does. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, even the controls of the game also feel very raw. In that case, I definitely don't mean it in any sort of a good way. It's just very... You know, it's, it's very cumbersome to use those menus. To have to press enter to... Like, you press up to use an item, and then you scroll through the options, and then you press enter to do that action. And you press down to access your inventory, and then move left and right to the inventory item, and then press enter on the item. It's really cumbersome. It's really slow. It's... Yeah, it's pretty annoying to use. And that's another way the game feels rough. But somehow that didn't, you know, it didn't annoy me too much. I'm really amazed this game was as interesting and enjoyable to me as it was. I mean, I talk about these things and it certainly has a lot of problems. Overall, the graphics are not very good. I like the graphic design. It's very dark and creepy and disturbing. Just, oh god, really disturbing. But in terms of graphical fidelity, it doesn't look very good at all. And the sound quality is, for at least the voices, is, you know, it's pretty bad. But again, there's all these other things that just work. Somehow it, somehow it works. I don't really know how. It's so strange. It feels like a crudely bashed together mess that somehow works. It's a very strange thing. And like I said at the beginning, it's really nice to see a game that focuses on mental issues and mental health so directly. It's not something that often comes up in games, and if it does, it's usually just a relatively minor thing. It's not the main focus of the story. And in, the, in this case, it absolutely is. The entire story is all about... I guess, mental health in general, or I guess specifically depression? Yes. Depression and and Susan's experience with it. Just getting by in life and living another day and trying, trying to find a reason to live. It deals with that directly, and that's really nice to see. And it, it deals with it in such a such a raw and honest way that I love. It doesn't feel distance from it at all. Quite the opposite. It feels like it's right up in it. It feels like this game is just... It's filled with rage. <laughs> That's what it feels like to me. Like, it's filled with rage. It's just... It's marinated in poison and blood. Just... Ugh. You know, it's a... It's a disgusting game. But I mean that in a good way. Because it feels absolutely appropriate. Because it's about all of these things. All of these... Horrible and disturbing things. And... It certainly doesn't shy away from getting its hands dirty in the subject. And I love that.
I think that might actually be the end of what I can think about to talk about. Did I actually do a good wrap-up this time? Did I actually manage to not forget anything major? Oh my god! Well, I'll probably remember something in like five minutes. <laughs> it always happens. But... Bloody hell, I love these... I love games that just feel so damn personal. I absolutely adore it. It's not often that I get to experience a game like this. Alright. Is there nothing else I can think of to talk about? I guess I'll end it here then. So to me, this has been a trip through the hell of Su the hell of Susan's mind, basically. It was dark and it was disturbing, and it was very unpleasant, and it was all of those things in all of the right ways. And I love it. I really do. All right. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed. My playthrough of The Cat Lady. And now I feel utterly mentally exhausted. <laughs>